come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show and review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out. Yes, you can help us out with it by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All that helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same crazy stuff that we are. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what we watch tonight? Happy Halloween, by the way. Happy Shana. Halloween. Yeah. Happy yeah. Halloween, Holly. Happy Halloween. Thank Michael. you. Thank Happy you. Halloween. Uh, it is the uh, highest uh, of holidays. I say evil lives tonight. That's that's what I say about Halloween. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's how I feel about it. What the fuck is this? Get rid of this. Uh, yeah. Tonight we watched a movie called Two Evil Eyes. Directed by? Uh, George Romero and Dario <gasps> Argento. Double whammy. Double whammy. What? Why? What is this movie? <laughs> the way you said that. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would they do that? Why? What, what year was this? Uh, 1990. 90? Wow. It doesn't feel like 90. It feels like 79. Maybe. Yeah. 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 It feels out of time. Did I shoot this on VHS? Like. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah. How, so did, how this, did this? How did this happen, Colin? How did we get? Tell us the story of when of <laughs> of when George and and, George, and Daria met. George and Daria. Yes. Yeah. When yeah. Did, they did they meet? Okay. <laughs> so they met in 1979. No, that's not true. 1977, <laughs> something like that. So, um, Dario Argento was obviously like a big deal in Italy from like the 70s on when he did Bird Match. with the Crystal yeah. Plumage and mm. became like a, a pretty big deal. The Italian Hitchcock. I feel like you right? just like saying that title. The Italian Hitchcock. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he also likes saying Bird with the Crystal Plumage. <laughs> That's what I was talking it about. Is, yeah. It is a good title though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it title. is. It is. Cat it's Nine Tales. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Four flies on gray velvet. It's not as We've good heard as them all. I was like, we, I was like, we do this every time we talk every about it. <laughs> she has a point. Um, okay, so uh, Night of the Living Dead was a big deal. Uh, George Romero did in 1968, and mm -hmm. uh, Dario Argento having this kind of, you know, like uh, the the zombie movie, I guess, played really well in Italy, and so Argento had the money. And was like, we should hire Romero to do mm -hmm. a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. And so he financed Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead is oh, a Dario okay. Argento and his brother Claudio production, right? Okay. So the Italians put up the money. And then they took the movie and then they recut it. So there's a different version that came out in Italy. Of That's course. why there's like <laughs> three versions of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. It's in their blood. They're Italian. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Just what happens. What? See, see our shocking dark episode. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that spun off like a whole I mean, was that revenge? Of, Don't we usually get the Italian uh, movies and then re-edit them and put them out on a different title <laughs> yeah. here? They're just right. getting, you know. They just redo, revenge. they remake <laughs> our stuff like and cannibalize it. So you mix like Dawn of the Dead and, you know, Escape from New York dark. and a little yeah, bit, so. yeah. And aliens or whatever. So when two horror icons fall in love, yeah. So <laughs> they had an obviously, they buy a cat together, right? Yeah. They've been friends for a while, and uh, anyway, in the nineties, I guess um, somebody told Dario that like he should try to break into that American movie market, and so there was a period of time when Dario Argento came to America and made movies in America. You know what those Americans love? <laughs> Cats. <laughs> well, he made two. He made this and uh, Trauma was the only okay. other filmed in America. That was filmed in Minneapolis because that's... Uh -huh. We go to make. Uh, Can you imagine move. Dario Argento walking around <laughs> Minneapolis? Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> right with Brad Dorif and I Piper mean, Laurie. I, I kind of yeah. can because Minneapolis attracts weird people. <laughs> Dario Argento is, is a weird Prince? guy. He's just. A, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's a weird guy. He's yeah. a weird looking guy. Mm -hmm. Like he's. He yeah. looks like he belongs in his movie. No, Isn't his Masters of Horror pelts was that Canada? Not, Canada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's why I was like, oh, wow. So this was actually like a Dario Argento production. So it's like, is Dario Argento like a bigger deal than George Romero? Like worldwide? Because you think George Romero is like the guy who invented the zombie, I but it's like yeah. Dario is always hiring George <laughs> yeah. to do stuff. He's like, I've got the money. <laughs> I mean, I think Just because he's good with his money doesn't mean he's more popular. That's true. I, I would say in America, maybe George Romero George is probably is more oh, popular, oh, yeah, but yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of America, yeah, yeah definitely Dario Argento. I walked up to someone like, you know Dario Argento? Yeah. 
what words he's right, right. Yeah. yeah yeah but he's like in a movie he's in a gaspar noe movie that's coming out called vortex as an actor really <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like, forget that he's still alive he is yeah. making a movie mm-hmm. he has a movie wrapped called uh, the black glasses which is coming out so yeah it's still Amazing. working at, uh, i mean there's like him and john carpenter i think are like the last two guys of that generation of horror filmmakers that are still wor- alive i mm-hmm. guess to work mm-hmm. David Cronenberg has gone his own way, I guess. I have a shirt. It, like, lists horror directors, and it has... Are you Hooper. them off as they go? Dude, John Carpenter's the only one on it's still Jesus. alive. Yeah. It's it's a uh, Hooper Craven. Oh, I remember this. We made a joke. Yeah. Hooper, but he's looked yeah. like he's been dead for years, yeah. so I don't yeah. think anything's going to happen to him. I it's think true. it's Hooper Craven Carpenter Romero or the uh, names yeah, on it. Yeah. And like every time I pull out to wear I'm like, "Ooh, this feels like I'm tempting fate. Better put it away, you know?" Yeah. Like, yeah, like mm. Well, would it surprise you to know that Did he died? Colin, don't, oh, no, 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 we're not gonna, don't we'll, say it. Don't say it. Don't even push your mouth. Um that this, uh, I mean, obviously the name Two Evil Eyes is because that's where they settled on. There were going to be two of them, but originally there were going to be four. The idea uh, that Argento had was that four directors are going to make short Edgar Allan Poe adaptations, and we're going to put them together in an anthology. And so they contacted John Carpenter, and they contacted Stephen King, because uh, uh, George Romero and King worked together all right. the time on... The creep shows and mm-hmm. tales from the dark side and all so that. So Carpenter said, "How much?" And I wonder. <laughs> and then said, "Fuck you!" When you heard the said, number, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder because he would have been. Why did they know? I don't know. They. Uh, I was watching the thing, and he. It was like negotiations. It didn't. What he was busy <laughs> no, with he, something else. He said, "This gives me an idea." And then he went and did body bags instead. His body bags. Yeah. That's right. That yeah. was his 1990 thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so ultimate and Stephen King, I guess, like uh, really didn't want to be a director again after Maximum Overdrive. Like that experience, he was just like, nope, fuck it, I'd rather just write. <laughs> yeah. I don't really blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him either. Yeah. Uh, so they both uh, chose their Edgar Allan Poe stories. Um, what do we Ed- got? Well, the irony is that both of these stories were done before in the 60s by Roger Corman in one movie which was called Tales of Terror. There's three stories in that, but one of them is The Black Cat and one of them is The uh, Facts in the Case of um, Valdemar. Oh. All three of them star Vincent Price. <laughs> and one's got like Peter Lorre in it and the other one has the Basil Rathbone. Uh, Tales of Terror. Tales of Terror. It's actually pretty good. I got I it. I can look. I was going to say. Maybe it's interesting. Yeah. I was like, I want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for Sean's pick next week. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's the same stories just done, you know, just like. Older. Uh, yeah, but older. Uh, because uh, we, we were talking before on one of our. We did The Haunted Palace, which we was did, one of the. Uh, yeah. That was one of the Edgar Allan Poe cycle that Roger Corman did. Right. Right. And I'm not sure. I know Lucio Fulci. Another Italian director did a movie called The Black Cat, but I think it's like really loosely based on the Poe story. Um, I mean, Edgar Allan Poe is like what? One of the greatest um, American horror authors, right? Yeah, yeah. Master of Suspense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only yeah. 30 years old? <laughs> According yeah. to this grandson? Yeah. I saw that and I was like, I suddenly felt my mortality all of a sudden. I was like, oh no. I was like, what the fuck have I done? Do you know what he died of? Dysentery. I have no idea. Pneumonia? Nobody does. Apparently, oh. the uh, circumstances surrounding his death are vague and uh, nobody knows. There was mm-hmm. a movie that was made, uh, not, well, what was it? It was from Cusack? The, yeah. Wasn't that by, like, uh, uh, the guy who did like V for Vendetta or something like that. I think oh, so. Yeah. Oh, no. I remember when I this came out. The Raven? Yeah. The Raven, yeah. yeah. I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know? Nobody has a head shaped like that, though. Uh-uh. Uh, you know? He is unique. John Cusack or Edgar? No, Edgar Allan Poe Paul has like a bulbous head. Oh, yeah. Head okay. Bulbous. Yeah. Good word. Well, I'm going to tell you that there is a Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame all timer who. His life ambition is to make the documentary, or not the document, but uh, the definitive Edgar Allan Poe movie has been About working on this or script using his wow. for like forty years. What? At one point, I've this seen is an pictures obsession. of it's him as Edgar Allan Poe when he was younger. Now he's too old, but when he was younger, it was like, yeah, I could see it, and that would be. 
don't know. Sylvester Stallone. No. Oh, <laughs> are you serious? Yes. Oh, uh, shit. If you Google wow. Sylvester Stallone, Edgar Allan Poe, you're going to find a lot of information on his lifelong wow. love project that he's never been able to, Shut to up. pull off. And you'll wow. see pictures of him as Edgar wow. Allan Poe. So do you no think idea. he has like a deep-seated hatred for... Cusack now being like you took my project you son of a bitch like <laughs> I'm sure that's I'm sure that like said Sylvester you can't do one of these for at least 10 years yeah <laughs> you know oh so he now, definitely yeah. hates him he I, definitely he, yeah, I then. think he is still like he's not done with it yet like we still may get the Edgar Allan Poe you know it. no, no he, he couldn't be in it, it. Yep. no let no, Sean we need to let him because I want to see this oh, sure I would love <laughs> to watch that like you remember how fun God he was imagine that but even oh, more ridiculous you know more and worse wigs <laughs> more oh, gothic and worse ways. Gothic and worse. Can you? Oh, that's, is, I want it now. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Combs, right? Didn't he, he did, have yeah. like a one man play that was mm-hmm. him doing Edgar Allan yeah. Poe stuff? And he looked yeah. like decently mm-hmm. like Edgar Allan mm-hmm. Poe. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I feel like John C. Riley is the only person I can think of that has the right head shape, you know? Yeah. Edgar Allan Poe is a very like distinct profile, yeah, you know? I know? But I You're think he was a me. small dude. Yeah, he for, was he? Yeah, he wasn't he was a like, big dude. No, he like, always looks older than thirty to me when I look yeah. at the picture. I'm like, People aged hard and fast back in the yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> and he was eighteen hundreds or something like that. Right, yeah. he died in eighteen thirty nine to eighteen seventy nine. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, 18, yeah, yeah. like mid eighteen hundreds. Yeah. yeah, gave us some great stories. I remember having uh, when I grew up uh, when when kids used to read books. I had uh, like the the greatest tales of Edgar Allan Poe or whatever. I've got. I know. think I've got like the complete works yeah. of Poe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the leather, ba- the fancy leather bound one from no, Barnes and Noble. That's what I have. Yeah, not the fancy one. <laughs> Google it. Can, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't have to imagine much. He's in there. Um, did you ever read then the Black Cat and uh, the? Mm-hmm. Cat- I did a while ago. Long time no, ago. I purposely skipped it because I knew it'd be about cat murder. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the gist of it. I was like, okay. Bricks up his wife, cat in the wall. So I'm like, yeah. that's enough. Because I don't need graphic detail about what happens to the cat. I so. think I read that one. I don't remember ever reading the facts in the case of M. Baldwin. No, no, I don't remember reading no. that one. Yeah. Nope. Maybe really young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Let that was see. him going for it there. Maybe really young <laughs> Stallone. Yeah, like, but put a Hitler stash on him. Yeah, when he, he had... He passed yeah, it like I Rocky time. It. Like... Yeah. After that, it's done. He couldn't play him anymore. Dude, I think if he, he has then. been working on it since then. He has always wanted to do this movie. So, yeah, lifelong ambition. I, say, I support that. this passion project. Yeah. <laughs> this is something that will never get done because it's the one, it's like he's just. The one that he's perfect. always chasing. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. I can't do it unless it's perfect. Does he live in Baltimore? <laughs> Stallone? He doesn't, but he should. He should, yeah. yeah. He should. I mean, yeah. Sure That's when we'll know the obsession is really taken over. Yeah, when he moves to Baltimore. I'm yeah. sure he did it at some point, yeah. probably oh, in like he's... the 70s or 80s. He was like, I'm going all in on this thing, and I'm just going to never get it. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Can we get uh, that biopic? <laughs> just Stallone's Edgar Allan Poe year? Yeah, yeah no, see that? Yeah, that, that yes. <laughs> the biopic just about his obsession. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, now we're just, yeah. just that inside, part of Stallone's inside. life. Copyright it. All right, yeah. I like this. I don't even know what it's called. Copyright uh, uh, 20... Sylvester Stallone, Edgar Allan Poe Biopic. Project. <laughs> yeah, 2021 Saturday Night Free Trump. Uh, Edgar Allan Stallone. So, <laughs> okay, so we got, uh, well, I guess um, as with any anthology movie, you're always kind of in a situation where you kind of have to look at the different segments. Ind- independently of each other, right? I mean, like, um, we have this conversation before, right? Like, whenever you do an anthology, it's like, is it as strong as its strongest segment, or is it as weak as its weakest segment? Or which way do you always go on it? You're like, oh, that one was good, so the movie was good. Or well, uh, as long as I enjoy it, want fifty percent of it, then I think it's successful, right? We should have a, a different name for it. Like an anthology always seems like more than two. Like the I know. minimum should be three for an anthology. This is if, a double feature, feels, right? This feels, yeah. Well, is it a double feature if it's shorter than? I suppose it's a double feature. Like so this is like Grindhouse before yeah. Grindhouse, except they were able to except keep their movies gr- under an hour, right? And not as grindy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it always feels like it should be some different. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's hard. Like we were talking before. Like we always judge it or how they stack them, where they put the stories yeah. and the editing and all that stuff. I mean, do you think the only thing we can think of is like if we flipped them, would it have? more impact okay this impact. is this is a question we're gonna have to come around oh, to are we, we gonna dive into yeah. it first okay. yeah because i'm curious about your reactions to that 
question. Yeah. Like, if they were flipped, would it be different? And what do you think of mm-hmm. the overall? Okay, so the first one is the facts in the case of M. Valdemar, and this is George Romero. He wrote it, right? Um, and so they filmed in, in Pittsburgh. Of course. Uh, so this is like the thing about both of these movies, I guess, um, the locations are something else. I mean, are they? I don't know. Am I seeing something here that's... Uh, no, they're beautiful houses, mm-hmm. like beautiful old world gigantic houses. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they find these places. They're like knocking on doors. And you're like, hey. Are we- you kidding me? This I, is a, I think a producer of this movie owns this house. <laughs> well, like- <laughs> on the East Coast, it's easier to come by stuff like this. You know, everything yeah. out there is older than it is. I think it's like the circles that they travel in, you know, it's like once you hit like a certain, you know, you're you're in Pittsburgh and they're like, George, of course, George, you want to make friends of ours, had this house and whatever. Uh, It's a family affair. Stay the weekend. That's right, because we have, uh, you know, like, I mean, a lot of the Romero stable is here. Uh, Production designer Cletus Anderson, uh, makeup effects guy Tom Savini. Mm -hmm. I think this was Savini's first time working with Argento. And then he worked again with him on uh, Trauma. And, of course, our uh, Savinia worked with uh, Romero on a bunch of movies. Um, so the first one is about, well, okay, I guess we got to set this up. So who's in the, this first movie? Who's our stars? Adrian Barbo. Mm-hmm. Adrian Barbo's hair. Her yeah. hair. Is Her hair is second build. Yeah. Second build. Yeah. 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 Shoulder, shoulder pads are oh, third build, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And the sensuous energy yeah. of Adrian Barbo. I Okay. <laughs> I mean, it really is just the hair that throws me off. Everything it's, else is fine. It's this is one of her most off-putting roles, I would say. Like, I don't know. I just recently rewatched The Fog, and she's so enjoyable and lovable in The Fog. Compared to this, I'm like, oof. Yeah, yeah she's uh, cold and inaccessible in this. I think, that, but, but that works. Like that's that's yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, does it well. Sure. Because both of these characters... Okay, well, I guess we got to set this up. So, Adrian... Who's the other guy? Enrique Iglesias' father? Like, uh, he's got a mole in the same He place. looks like a soap opera actor, he doesn't does. he? Yeah. He does. I mean, he acts like a soap opera actor, yeah. but he also, like, really I mean, looks like one. That's Julio Iglesias. <laughs> is it? His real dad, Julio Iglesias? Well, his name is... Famous Ra- dad? No? Okay. Rami, Rami Zada, and I can't say that I recognize him from anything else. I'm sorry, Rami. I haven't seen your... Uh, Sean, you would know Julio Iglesias from the, the Rico Suave song. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. my... Okay, it's fine. We're going to play it off air, and you'll know exactly <laughs> what we're talking about. That's fine. We have to cover this later. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so who who are they, and uh, and what are they up to, these these two these two folks? Uh, oh, the doctor and hair? A doctor slash <laughs> doctor a hypnotist and, hair. and the hair. Yeah. I know, oh. because this is like a thing that you expect that your doctor right. can do, right? The doc- I you know, it's see, like, well, we've tried everything out. Now, I wish my doctor yeah, could do that. I've always wanted to be hypnotized. I've always, well, I always have too, but I don't think I can. I went on stage for one of those, bring up 10 people and we'll hypnotize all of you. Yeah. You know? I, I think you have to be like receptive to, to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, mentally, I'm not like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wanted it. I was just like, yeah, do it. Come on. I'm, but I feel like you can't do, have any skepticism, right? Uh, right? Yeah, it's all inaccessible up there. Yeah. What's the very disappointing hypnotism movie? Ooh, is there? Are there? Okay, give me top. Give me five hypnotism time. movies, and yeah. I'll give you a go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Name two. Name uh, got, one other one. <laughs> I got Stir of Echoes. Okay. okay. All right. All right yeah. Number one. That's my. I was gonna top, say if you count like the scenes in every James Wan movie that's ever been made, there's one of those in yeah. most of his. Any, but like about mm-hmm. hypnotism and like so and so was mesmerized and they were out killing people and they were mesmerized. What the fuck movie is that? Okay, we'll mm-hmm. come back to it. Um. <laughs> Danny Darko. Right? There's some hypnosis going yeah, in there yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, Stir of Echoes gives you like the inside. That's like full yeah. on. Like that's the plot of the movie. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So Adrian Barbeau. Yes. Apparently. Yeah has married this old dude. It's kind of like she's Anna go- Nicole yeah. Smith, but she's not. And J. Anna Howard Nicole Marshall, yeah. 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 That guy looked like a living corpse. Yeah, he did. That's true. Mm-hmm. Worse than... That's the remake, right? We, right, we yeah. 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 So, Major gold digger, yeah. She married this guy for his money. Yep. He's now old. He's dying, decrepit. He's in a bed, and he's all in pain, pain written. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Yep. And because of this, she's brought in a doctor... He's mm-hmm. also a mesmerist. Mm-hmm. I like mesmer- a mesmerist. 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 mesmerist yeah. Yeah. I like that. Because yeah. I'm assuming, right, Poe wrote no, it's this. It's like you should be doing this when you say it. It sounds very old yeah. tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Mesmerist. Yeah. Yeah. Mesmerism. Well, it had to be like in Edgar Allan Poe's day, you know. Right. Was when this they, like right. a new thing, mesmerism? And yeah, when they used like, to have like, 
old names for now, like, current stuff we still have now. Like now, I'm like, pic- now I'm picturing like the Prestige and the Illusionist yeah. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like yeah. an Alienist. Like, yeah. you wouldn't call him that yeah. now. Right, but. now it's a doctor. Then Alienist. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Mesmerist and yeah. hypnotist. Mesmerist. But yeah, I assume that Edgar Allan Poe went to some kind of public event sure. play in a playhouse, you know, where somebody was putting on like a mesmerism show oh, and he yeah. said, what would happen if you died while you were under hypnosis? This is a great idea. <laughs> in theory, I love this idea. Yeah. <laughs> in practice. Yeah. Well. we'll get there. Okay. Well, <laughs> tell me what happens. What happens in practice? So, Yeah. <laughs> Old guy. <laughs> He's dying. He's dying. Uh, mm-hmm. she, like, I assume they have some sort of prenuptial agreement of some sort. She goes to the lawyer's office or the executor of their estate, whatever, yeah. and is like, I was arm candy for him for my entire adult life. I, right. just, I was used for years. Yeah, it's time for me to collect my payout. And mm-hmm. which I think most of us collectively agree. Just like, yeah, yeah, She's basically sounds fair. She's basically like, I did a job, I was dedicated, and yeah. now I'm owed what Th- I was owed. That's like, the kind of thing, like with with gold digger criticism. It's not like the man isn't getting anything out of it, He's right? Get, you he know, so it, it is a trade off. It is a right. fair trade off, in my opinion. So yeah, as long as everyone is clear on what the terms are, I don't see any issue. Paid yeah. For services. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's the way that we assume. Oh, and the the lawyers played by E.G. Marshall, which is important yeah. only because those two were in Creep Show, the George Romero Creep Show. Yeah. Mm. And at one point, there is like an in joke where he says, "You got to go ask Mr. Pratt about this." Well, that was his character's name in Creep. Oh, they should have uh. been a little more heavy handed. Said something about a crate, then I would have been like, yeah, "Oh, yeah, the crate, right. yeah. yeah." Um. So, it turns out she's having an affair with the doctor, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Which this house is big enough before. that guy could be living in that house right. and he, he wouldn't could, know yeah, it. He just, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Six rooms down, you yeah, never know. Yeah, he's bedridden, he didn't know. Yeah. This is like a crazy big house. It has these crazy winding staircases. Four stories, yeah. right? Four stories we yeah. established? Yeah, because we don't even get to see the basement's basement, yeah. but we yeah. know it's there because we see the stairs down to the basement. Maybe that's the like, wine cellar. It's like, a tra- uh. it's like a traditional Tudor mansion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figure it leads down to like... The catacombs. Yeah. It has a pool. It, it has, has a pool. the gardens. If we were doing the cask of Amontillado, they would have gone down those yes. stairs. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the, the... Contemporarily, it's like the Scream 3 house. And that's all I'll say about that. Okay. So Trust me. their plot here, right, is because this is basically... it's It, it read to me, which is kind of weird, um, or I guess the reading that I had on it, because Romero had done uh, Creep Show. This feels like an EC Comics story, right? Yeah. You've yeah, got it does. your morally mm-hmm. uh, compromised lead characters trying to pull off something, and then the supernatural is going to come in and and uh, set the scales right. right. Um, so it's Terror Track all over again, right? Yeah, they have gone, is. and the 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 doctor has hypnotized the old guy, so he's signing contracts. He's making phone calls, like giving a, giving uh, Adrian Barbeau like permission to switch stuff in his will and all that stuff. He's, not, like you said, signing contracts. He's under. Yeah, he's going to give her $3 million. The irony is she's telling her boyfriend he's they're getting $1 million, and they're both very money hungry. Very yeah. money hungry people. And like They can't trust each mm-hmm. other because they're so interested in the money, and they know that what they're doing is like you know, well, yeah, you can't trust a doctor that like you've hired to work for you privately. I'm sorry, like they they've already <laughs> broken their like Hippocratic oath as a doctor by even doing this. So yeah, it, they're kind of a wild card at this point. And he even says like there's some comment about that later on where um she said something about like oh well like we won't have any problems because we, we can just like buy our way out of them. And he was yeah. like oh yeah I know like I'm one of them or something like that. He makes like a reference to the fact like yeah mm-hmm. I'm like, on your payroll. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, people will do anything for money. So yeah. like, don't I know it? Yeah. yeah. There is a heavy focus, obviously, on uh, there's a, a criticism, I think, in all of George Romero's work about uh, consumerism. And I think that's like watching this one. There is a major focus on like rich people do evil things. The movie, the, it ends with blood on bloody money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's all about like they're greedy. They, you know, talk about like the what wealth can buy you access to things like, well, we have money. We'll just be able to go and right. cover this. Nobody asks questions. We have the money. <laughs> that was Adrian Barbo. <laughs> the second part of this. Like, we got the money, damn it. 
it's like, yeah. it's like that will just drive people to ask more questions. Yeah. Well, what are they going to ask questions about? What What do these folks do? They've got him hypnotized and he's mm-hmm. signing the will over. Okay, it's all good. Well, mm-hmm. she's got a day nurse and a night nurse that come to take care of him. Right. And one of them is like criticizing her because like the guy is just like screaming in pain when he's not hypno- not hypnotized, basically. Mm-hmm. Very true. Like, and it's this is a gigantic house and you can hear him screaming screaming in pain all throughout the house Mm -hmm. so like it seems really her handling of it seems really inhumane and that's what the the nurse is telling her like you should just send him to hospice or like a hospital to like make him more comfortable at the very least Mm -hmm. and so she's getting like criticism of how she's handling it from everybody is there a specific reason because why she doesn't send him to the hospital as far as money wise like what will what is she afraid him going to the hospital will mean for her money? I think if he dies or lives, so they can do this hypnotism thing on him. They're keeping him at the home where they can kind of control him under, the, under hypnotism. So that because remember he did the phone call. Yeah, so he he, he made failing. him do the phone call. So I guess it's like maybe to cover their asses. So like if he has to like speak to anything, right? They still yeah. Have him. Then yeah, if he goes to a hospital, he's gonna be talking. To they're everybody. keeping him on yeah. ice in case right. they need him. You know. Yeah, because it turns out whenever, <laughs> whenever he like is uh, out of hypnosis, right. right? He's belligerent and he's angry. And because then we get the idea. Life. Yeah, <laughs> we get the idea that their relationship is not all like you know. It was, uh, it was transactional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, we should mention that the uh, nurse is uh, well. She's credited as Christine Forrest. She's actually Christine Romero, or she was. She's uh, ex George Romero's ex wife. Who he kept um, working with after they got divorced, right? I don't think so. No, no, because they, they got were the, they were, at a certain point. They were married for like thirty years and got Oof. divorced, yeah. and then he moved to Canada and became like a Canadian citizen and married. Jesus, the that was a bad of divorce Land of, the, of Land of the Dead. Yeah, that's yeah. a bad he divorce. Left if the you country. Moved to a and now country. she has his estate, and she's releasing the other one. Oh. The new wife is like okay. Well, anyway. Wouldn't you guys uh. feel like you won the divorce though if your ex up and left the country? You'd be like, like I win. I <laughs> or I mean, also you'd be like, shit, what did I do? Like, am I that bad? Yeah. Well, she is now on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Thank you, MF Mad, for uh, keeping track of this. Thank because you. she was in Creep Show. She was in Monkey Shines, where she basically played a similar part. Yeah. And she was in Two Evil Eyes. Yeah. So. Um, Welcome to the wall. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. Your certificate is in the mail, Christine. Um, now you get jumped in. So. So they they've got this plan. They're going to get the money, right? They just have to keep him alive for you know for a couple more days, mm-hmm. and the checks will clear and all this other stuff. But then the fucker goes ahead and dies, uh, <laughs> like you do. Yeah. Or does he? Hmm. Do, they say he has to he has to stay alive for what two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah which like yeah, with like someone in weeks. this state, that is a long time. Yeah, like that is a lot to ask. I feel like with someone yeah. who is barely clinging on you know yeah i like that the lawyer was the one that was like well you better keep him around for a couple weeks i know <laughs> lawyers he, know what's up he knows what's up <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's doing everything <laughs> to figure it out well like i don't but know but it's his lawyer i know that's the funny thing well, well i make jokes all the time to my partner about like oh well you know just make it look like an accident so i can collect your life insurance you know like i say stuff like that all the time i can't imagine that being taken out of context and used against me you know what i'm saying <laughs> right? so like that lawyer was just kind of being like lady I, I know what your relationship was like, but just keep it together for a little bit. I'm not right. sure. You, Don't I'm, say anything. Yeah. I'm not sure you should have recorded that just now. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so the. Um, What's that red stuff on your hands? <laughs> well, the guy goes ahead and dies. And so they, because they had to keep him alive for that long, they come up with the idea that, hey, we should actually, like, preserve him somehow. Mm hmm. And so we're going to go put him in the the meat locker. I was like, the they obviously live in the Midwest because they have a deep freeze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to be able to store a whole deer if you need to or a side <laughs> of true. beef, right? Yeah. Got to get those, half a cow. Because it seems like those things show up in horror movies like all the goddamn time. Like back in the day, you always had like the freezer. Yep. Mm-hmm. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. or something Usually like that. Usually it was in the garage. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. My parents had one in the garage. That's where the oh, popsicles yeah? were yeah. kept. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the popsicles that's where were kept. popsicles were always kept. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And like the rack of lamb or something? I mean, what else are you keeping there? You well, big it was slams a family of four. There was, you yeah. know, yeah. Costco yeah. size yeah. hamburger. Chicken stuff. nuggets yeah. come. It was, it was ha- yeah, hamburger, pa- like, yeah. Stuff, Fam- frozen yeah. stuff that frozen they, stuff. that our parents bought for a month and they had to stock somewhere. Can you fit a body in there? That's my question. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Like coffin size? Absolutely. I, so I used Huge. to be a manager of an ice cream 
restaurant. And when I managed this place, I had to scrape out the inside of the deep freezes from all the frost they would build up on them. And just me being like my shorter height, there was times when I was reaching down into those deep freezes, scraping them, I was like, I can feel my feet starting to like come off the say, ground. And I was like, oh crazy. my God, I could totally <laughs> fall in and the lid would come down right on me and I'd be booked. It's going to be like a refrigerator. Yeah. Which comes out, okay, yeah. Right. You got to make sure it doesn't have one of those latches that yeah. comes yeah. in where you can lock it. So you're just I, like, yeah. Oh. I remember being a kid and if the popsicles weren't like up on other things, like I wouldn't be able to reach it because it was too Yeah, because yeah. they're popsicles deep. If the popsicles weren't on up on other things, you weren't eating that popsicle. Exactly. No. It was going to break your teeth off yeah. right. from being so cold. Yeah. It sounds right. very dangerous. It was. It was well, an event. I mean, that's probably why it's a great thing for a, a prop for a horror movie because everybody has these fucking memories of them, mm-hmm. right? And probably kids were dumb. They're like, "I bet you won't go in there," and just <laughs> egging other kids on to get in the freezer. That's how kids end up in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In the junkyard refrigerator. That, and that, that's like why um, garbage people won't pick up fridges anymore. Really? That's like a, one, of the, one of the many reasons. But like, it depends it. on when your fridge is made, obviously. But a part of the reason is that people were. Leaving like fridges on their curb, and then kids were fucking around and playing with them, and getting trapped inside. So, also like, because of the coolant, yeah, they have to dispose of them in oh, a certain that's way. Why that's what the now, government yeah. wants you to think, yeah. Holly. I know. Clearly, the real reason <laughs> is kids fucking around in the neighborhood. <laughs> Pick up a refrigerator, and it's full of dead cats, or like Probably. giant. You definitely got to call that in. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> so they put the guy, and so he gets frosty, right? Freezes mm. solid, but then in the middle of the night, right, he starts moaning. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> this reminded me of the first segment in Creep Show of Father's Day a yeah. little bit. Especially oh, yeah. When, yeah. It totally when did. the freezer popped open and we see inside of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, basically, that's the whole, like, gist that's going to happen here, right? <laughs> it's like, Duder's down there and he's talking. But why is he talking? Because he died while he was still under hypnosis, so mm-hmm. he cannot move on. Wake me up! Which I like this idea. I, I you do know, too. It's a always, great idea. Always, I like this. Whenever idea. you think about hypnosis, you always wonder, like, well, what happens if you hypnotized and then somebody kills your hypnotist? <laughs> and then you're just like, well, how do you bring them back and stuff like that? It was also like an office good. space. Well, it's also yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, he gets yes. hypnotized, and, and then, and then the, he's the stuck hypnos- that way. Yeah, <laughs> or like uh, there's two great episodes of the Dick and Van Dyke show that you should all go watch. Where Jerry how, Van Dyke. How old gets are you? Uh, <laughs> no, old used, enough to love Dick Van Dyke. I used to watch the shit out of Dick Van Dyke. I loved that show. Yeah, Nick at Night, man. I watched it. I just couldn't tell you what happened in a single episode of it. I know yeah. I have watched the show a, a couple times. There was shenanigans had. Shenanigans. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so Duder dies under hypnosis. That means he's able to contact them from uh, beyond the grave. The doctor takes this as like, I'm going to like some medical marvel. Yeah. Like. Right, right. I'm going to record all these uh, conversations that I'm having with the dead guy. This is kind of what I liked about what they did with the Adrian Barbeau character, though, because like we get the idea she wants the guy's money, mm-hmm. but she mm-hmm. seems kind of like conflicted by like what they're doing to him when he's alive and then, like, thinks this is just disgusting right. after he's dead. And the the to be fair, the doctor also has moments where it seems like he's not quite on board with this. It's like they go back yeah. and forth. So this is kind of like back I appreciate and forth that they match. both have a conscience. Yeah, like, yeah. Does, even if it's a smidge, <laughs> right? And it does kind of spiral out of what they like the perimeters of what they thought was going to happen so they're you know and then much, there's duplicity yeah. between the two of them and like who can i trust here how much yeah. would it suck to be that doctor and you have this like physical proof of life after death and you can't do anything about it because you're hiding the body <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah that's, <laughs> that would uh, that's the suck. dilemma <laughs> well he's also in a position which i'm sure he's keenly aware of that like if anything happens to the old guy and Adrian Barbeau, then there's no money in it for him, right? right. He has yeah. no connection to this, right. other than her promises to him. He has no he legal should... like right to anything. Yeah, yeah. So. But she's also does, probably though. a rich doctor at this point. Yeah, but well. not not three, well, one no. million. Yeah. But he's gonna, you know, thinks they're splitting, right? Or he's also got to think about it um, the other way too, because if like he's the only thing stopping Adrian Barbeau from kind of being free of all this once her husband is dead, like the only other person that knows anything about this technically is the doctor. Yeah. Which guy kind of felt like, ooh, so, somebody's going to turn on the other person here, it kind of feels like. Yeah. We kind of get a little hint of that, but in, I mean, they keep hinting at it, but I think, you know, toward the end, because, you know, Adrian Barbeau does come down the stairs at some point, 
and blasts holes in the fucking corpse's face with, yes. a, with a gun. And he's like, well, how do we, you know, cover this up? And she's like, we got to bury the body out in the backyard. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, this isn't going to work. Don't worry. We're rich. We right, got yeah. millions of dollars. You're right. We have the money. Nobody will ask right. questions. Yeah, they won't yeah, ask questions. Um, and that, of course, does not go well because the old guy, of course, one dark and stormy night. Mm. It's uh, nice and, uh, uh, you know, there's a storm raging outside. Ambiance. Yeah, of course. And somehow. Atmosphere. He comes back from the dead because this is a George Romero movie, so we're going to have you a gotta. walking corpse at some point. But the, I guess the other the thing, frosty corpse, night, frosty corpse walking yes. around your house. That's kind of creepy. Um, but he's also kind of said uh, from him his trance. He's not alone mm-hmm. out there. There are the others, and, and they are coming. coming. It's like Insidious. He's just the vessel, and all the spirits are coming right. and taking yes. the vessel. Oh, or or like are said. you afraid of the dark? Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. Of the, the X-ray specs or what have you, and they X-ray put them specs, on. Yep. And they're, yeah, because you were hoping for the, the, the shadow ghosts. From, I was. From ghosts the, the, the it sounded support. like that. I was hoping for shadow ghosts. Yeah. They're coming. Yeah. And then he ends up walking it? around the house. Yeah. And uh, confronts Adrian Barbo, who ends up alone in the house with the uh, the Walking Dead. Um, right, and she shoots him a bunch of times. She shoots yeah. him, and then this is like a Michael Myers movie. You just shoot him, and keeps on coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's creepy. How'd it work? I the makeup on him is gross. It is he gross. Does look gross. I was not creeped out yet. The creeped out part came later for me. Re- oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The way the bullet went through his face was yeah. really gross. Like, it just kind of went through, like, tissue paper. And I don't know, the idea of your skin being like yeah. that is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's creepy. Like, that's, yeah. The, yeah. I'm, the makeup of, um, does a lot for Effective this. makeup. I am also reminded of Terror Tract in this moment, yeah. too. Yes. yes. Yeah, this you know? Kinda, yeah, one of those stories, yeah. Yeah. He uh, he eventually ends up killing Adrian Barbeau mm-hmm. by... Uh, I didn't think that was terribly effective. Did he um, shoot her? He threw her off the stairs. Don't remember. He makes her, <laughs> he makes her fall he makes off the her, stairs. No, he makes her shoot herself first. Yes. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. And but then turns then the gun on her. Right. Yeah. It would have been... Then the blood splatters the yeah. chandelier. And then she and then goes over the railing. Goes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of want to see a bullet wound, I guess, because it kind of felt like, well, did she just die? But it, the, she landed mm-hmm. on the wound, I guess. But yeah, she did. And then, and then uh, Dr. Death takes the money and runs. Well, well he, also, he also releases, uh, what's his name? What's his last name? It was Bingo O'Malley. I mean, Bingo. sorry. It was, Bingo uh, O'Malley. Uh, uh, Vin Bird. Valdemar. Eddie Valdemar. Valdemar, Edward. Yeah. Yeah, Valdemar. Ernest? Yeah. Ernest Valdemar. Sure. Ernest. Yeah, he releases yeah. him yeah. from his, uh, from his hypnosis. Yeah. yeah. Which I thought he was going to fall over the railing and onto Adrian Barbeau. And yeah. And then be kind of like. Then immediately, like, bam, the guy's dead, but he still hangs on and like, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was kind of hoping he'd just fall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, was, yeah like he would immediately. But all right. Out. It was a choice. They're whatever. with you now. See, right. it's well, totally too ending, much. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then the ending would have been better because then the people, well. As we get there, he, uh, yeah, it would have been more effective if he had just fallen and like, oh wait, it's not over. Yeah, yeah. there that was a couple better. other scenes like that where it was like, this would have been better if we didn't see Adrian Barbeau come down the stairs and be watching. If you just cut to like him recording the corpse and then turn and then, around and she's there, freaked out by yeah. it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess that's the thing we're saying. Like maybe both of these movies feel like they were short, or at least this one to me, you know, feels like it was like a shorter subject that maybe was padded to fill an hour. I feel that time. way about both of these. Yeah. Okay. So do I. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. maybe these would have been better uh, had they added like a third one. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do yeah, three third and do them. You know, shorten them, yeah. shorten them, and yeah. throw another one in there. Yeah. 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 So we'll get more into that with the second movie, but <laughs> all right. So we're about to go there, but first to cap this one off, Holly was freaked out by the ending. I was. Doctor Death ends up becoming the next vessel, and that's the part that freaked me out. His makeup was very creepy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was. I liked yeah, that because makeup. He he, hypno- he he has this habit of hypnotizing himself, so he sleeps and won't be woken up, so he can get a good night's rest. But if you hypnotize. You are susceptible to the others that are coming through. Mm-hmm. So and then he can't wake himself up. Yeah. No, yeah. And he can't so wake himself up. The others killed him, and yeah, then they took, took his over. little uh, what you call it and shoved it in metronome. His his metronome, whatever. yeah. Which is uh, whatever the what's that shape? It's the obelisk. Yeah, and impale him with it. Yeah. Blood goes flying yeah. all over that's the place. Cool. I was like, whoa! All right, <laughs> I didn't think that's how it was going to go. I'm like, and this is pretty his, simple, but okay. And then his gaunt skeletal zombie face that was creepy. Yes. yeah, I liked that. that so we get two zombies for the price of one, and bonus Tom Atkins. Bonus Tom Atkins. Was his name in the credits before? Because he yeah. showed up. I was like, oh shit, I must have missed it. 
Yep, bonus Tom Atkins is a police officer. As uh, the best police officer. He should just be in the wraparound of every anthology, <laughs> right? right? Just busting down a door and investing in it yeah. while chomping on a cigar. Wearing That's a fedora hat. That. Yeah. yeah. Sh- Shutter, give Tom Atkins his own like anthology series, you know? <laughs> but only where he shows up at the end. Yeah. the cop investigator. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't need to be like, do it like four times a year, right? Do it like a quarterly thing. It's Tom Atkins' like anthology horror special. Well, I mean, that, pops I mean in, you wouldn't know? that be just the greatest thing to tie an anthology together? The one common factor is the same cop investigating yeah. yes, each one? Yes, yeah. exactly. That'd be what great. Is? I was actually, because the second one has a similar police officer, yeah. it's played by John Amos in the second Should've one, but I'm like, together. you could have tied this together yeah, right. and just had them both right, be Tom Atkins. Well, as we saw him, there's no connection between these two is there? no i saw nothing beautiful no. houses that's the only connection yeah, i see really yeah a, gorgeous architecture houses. i'm surprised <laughs> considering that there wasn't something that connected them mm-hmm. but, okay well tell me Although, about that's the, the other reason why i don't think this should be an anthology but called an anthology i'm saying oh, because they're not connected well yeah but how are cre- I'm not creep saying, shows not connected I, i'm not saying they have to be but i'm just adding it as a negative well anthologies used to be like i mean if you go back to like the earliest horror anthologies probably like what like dead of night right there's a wraparound and then there's individual like i'm gonna tell you this story and yeah then you cut away and there's the story then you come back yeah and i really think it was like pulp fiction kind of that was like you know, really destroyed the rules of the anthology and said, we're going to have characters from one interact in the other one. Right, and then yeah. you get, you know, go and eventually trick or treat, trick or treat, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, where the characters all intermingle. But they, Yeah, and they don't have to be intertwined, but it does help when there's like a host that's telling the stories, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I get that these are Poe stories, so that's kind of the common denominator or whatever. But it just, there's a better flow when it's like someone just telling you the story. Yeah. That maybe is a deficit of the movie that there yeah. isn't a wraparound, mm-hmm. that it just kind of like, here's story one. Yeah. Well, there is an intro, I guess, that they shot in Baltimore and yeah. show Poe's grave and, yeah. you know, say he inspired this this movie you're it's about to watch. It's just kind of vague. I don't yeah. know. And there's also yeah. like no break in between these at all. Like, there's not mm-hmm. a breather. There's nothing. We get done with one, we go right into the other one. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I recently rewatched the Twilight Zone movie. Does not hold up, guys. Uh, no. There, well, there is has... one good segment, and the wraparound is great. The other two stories are terrible, mm. yeah. and they're not. There's the other two aren't like scary. Mm. The last, the, like Terror Twenty Thousand Feet, is the only good yeah, one. one. The George and Miller the other one. two aren't mm-hmm. even trying to be scary. They're There's just three. weird. Yeah. There's uh, Spielberg, um, uh, uh, John Landis, right? And one Joe of them's Dante. about a guy that's really racist. Another one's about kids that get turned into adults. Yeah. And then there's the yeah oh yeah the that one crazy is good. kid in the house the, the, that the has kid the mental that, powers. Like, yeah. The kid has the powers and he controls yeah. the whole town. That has uh, one good sequence with the rabbit popping out of right, that. Yeah. that rabbit but other than still that, scares me. yeah, exactly. Still but other than that, the story is. Oh, well, then, there, then there's the wrap. The wrap around is yeah. my favorite part. I, I think know, I yeah. love the wrap around, but yeah, I like. I had so much nostalgic attachment, and it was one of those situations where it's like, just you just shouldn't go back. Mm-hmm. And I did, and I was like, oh, this is terrible. I see why people <laughs> criticize the shit out of this. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, this one jumps right into the black cat. So, who's the star of the black cat? Harvey Keitel. Yeah, and his beret, and his yeah. beret. What what's going on with berets in the 1990s? I don't know. This is uh, I declared during the movie that I need to do my research and figure out what the hell. Write a dissertation. I, I'm I'm not going to go that far, but I'm going to do some looking into it. I need to know. I need to know well, things about the beret. I never uh, thought I'd get here. I know we talked about it during the the, the while we were watching the movie, but for the lo- folks at home, uh, examples of 90s best beret action. Stallone. Stallone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Demolition Man, he had one, yeah. yeah. Beret. Uh, we said, what'd you say, I Mad Man? I Mad Man had some yeah. beret action. Some beret action. I Matthew wouldn't say, yeah, I was gonna Godzilla. say, I'm not gonna say it's a best representation, like you said, but yeah, Matthew Broderick had Didn't one in John Godzilla. Cusack wear a beret in some movie, or am I putting a beret on his Kurt Russell wore a beret somewhere, I swear to God. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Colin will not take that kind of slander against her. Was it Soldier? Or no, it was fucking Stargate. Stargate! Oh, yeah! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Knew it. A movie but again, long overdue but again, for the Saturday Night Show. we said it was different show. when it's uniform. Yeah. It's yeah, different. it's yes. different. If it's just your casual, like, hey, I'm wearing a beret today because yeah. I'm cool. Well, it tells you that they're an artist. Yeah. I feel like Diane Keaton wore a lot of berets. She Last did. wears a lot of she berets. Did. She still does. That's still her thing. She doesn't, do, she doesn't do her berets so much as she does, like, the fedora yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Sam Jackson. She traded one shitty hat for another, you know? So who is Harvey Keitel in this movie? 
uh, wannabe French artiste. Mm-hmm. Photographer. Yes, he's yeah. a uh, photographer, photographer with an impossibly gigantic house. Yeah. That's right. Like It's an entire it's city a, block, it looks like. It's like a four-story. And, yeah, when he's standing yeah. in the doorway in the porch of his house yes. later, it's like, and holy they pull out, You're just like, that goes a block back? <laughs> you can't see any neighbors. Like, you just see his house on this entire... Bo- it's, it's insane. crazy. Yeah, so Dude. this this story, this story is doing the, like, Ar- Argento, I think... Is actually the Edgar Allan Poe fan, right? Yeah. Of the, it's his idea. Like he's it. like, I'm yeah. a fan of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. So he's trying to work in all of these the pendulum and yeah. 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 The guy's name is Roderick Usher. Mm-hmm. He's working in the pit and the pendulum is the first we get to see the like murder scene. Yeah. 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 Which I don't think had ever really been. I mean, there you know, obviously the, there's the Vincent Price movie, The Pit and the Pendulum, but I don't think we ever actually saw what the pendulum actually did. I mean, they, I remember being they, like, Jesus. Uh, they did in The Raven. Well, that was later. Oh, you mean before this? Before yeah, 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 this. No, no, yeah, you know, you're it's right, like, you're right, oh, right. there's a bisected corpse, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, because the the pendulum. Uh, he's, uh, he's a photographer like of crime scenes. He does black and white photography. This is like a guy in New York City whose name was Ouija. Not like Ouija board. It was uh, W-E-E-G-E-E. Like Ouija without the G-E-E, right? And he was a yes. guy who came to prominence because he was like photographing grizzly stuff. Uh, this was turn of the century or something like that. So this is like what this guy is doing, going around to crime scenes, taking which I guess would be tabloid photos yes. and then publishing them in books that art books, which is like, oh, your new yeah, art which show. It's like if it's an ongoing investigation, and you're taking photos of crimes and you can't just publish that in a book. Like, no, that is not like you legally only- cool. Like the only person they would call is like the crime scene photographer who or works the police department. for the police department. Yeah. 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 It feels like the Danny DeVito character in L.A. Confidential, kind of like that's the '50s version yeah. of what Ouija was doing. Like I don't know, if it was the tens or the aughts or whatever of the 1900s, mm-hmm. and that seems to be where they're going with this. But that's almost irrelevant to the plot. He has a girlfriend who's a violinist mm-hmm. slash witch. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe okay we got to go there at some point but okay for the setup so it's the story of the black cat she yeah. adopts a black cat comes mm-hmm. to the house with a white mark on its chest yeah it's mm-hmm. important and he hates that cat does he hate it right off the bat i don't know but yeah. clearly there's an antagonism like he he's not really a cat person well i think he's a psychopath mm-hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> there's that. There's that. yeah and a big drunk. And a big drunk. Yeah. We yeah. established during this movie I, that we're pretty sure Harvey Cartel was, in fact, very drunk. I was going to say, I would love to see, like, a behind-the-scenes anything of this movie just to see if, like, he's just stumbling around on set and completely I know. loaded. He because, has yeah. to be, right? But that's what I'm saying. Like, I have seen drunk performances in movies. Denzel Washington gives a really good one. And, it's hard to uh, give a good drunk performance. Because I didn't yeah. think, People usually overdo it. Yeah. Because I yeah. think Albert Finney does a great one in Under the Volcano, which no one's seen. I didn't think very much of Nicolas Cage in Leaving Las Vegas. Mm. To be honest with you, I thought no, that was I didn't overdone. Either. A little too much, yeah. 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 But this, I believe this guy was fucking like yeah. hammered drunk. Yeah. If he's, a lot. If he's like, not actually drunk while filming this, then bravo. Yeah, yeah give Barbie, that man a retroactive man. ass Oscar, Barbie you know? Like, one of our greatest yeah. actors <laughs> for this. Because, like, the way he kind of like shifts his head around so that his eyes can focus on what's right in front That's, of him, you know, I'm like. The head shift in the eyes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, and he does this the the drunk walk. Yep. I mean, it's like holy mm-hmm. fuck! Like, Spot did they on. get him drunk to do this movie? I need to know. And that like <laughs> that like your reaction just being delayed by like two yeah. seconds. He's got that yeah. down. And yeah, it's one hundred percent believable. Never yeah. still. You're always just slight moving. swaying around. It or is something. spectacular. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah. If mm-hmm. I mean, if nothing else, you want to see like for all of you aspiring actors out there, you want to base yeah. your drunk performance off of this yeah. is Harvey it. Cartel. Yeah, I would say <laughs> two so. evil eyes. Yeah. This is it. Um, so anyway, uh, for the sake of his art, uh, uh, Usher <laughs> strangles a cat. <laughs> he fucking strangles that cat. Cause that'll death. sell well in a book. Who the fuck's buying a yeah, book of strangled is... cat pictures? Where do they live? What, cause what was the, like his, his publisher said something to the effect of. Same tone, different subject matter. Yeah. Like I thought, you know, like you would take that as lighter subject. You're taking pictures of grizzly corpses. Right. You want to go, go lighter go, or go black. And, yeah. Black. Give and it a palate cleanser. Else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't go strangle your fucking girlfriend's cat. Yeah. You know, against in front the, of a painting. Yeah. 
that makes it different, I guess. This guy's uh, he's playing on a different uh, you know field here, playing mm-hmm. field. Um, so anyway, she's like, he fucking killed my goddamn cat. So mm-hmm. then there's a she great scene, she's, yeah, because she has people calling her. Uh, apparently, people are canvassing the city looking for this cat. Well, she also may be cheating on him, which is implied. I think he's following her at one point, sees her with some other guy. Do we, was she actually cheating with the other guy? She's definitely. Uh, making out with a student with a mm-hmm. 15 year old yeah and uh julie benz who we established this is her first movie plays mm-hmm. this uh, student julie benz was uh in buffy the vampire slayer mm-hmm. and angel and dexter mm-hmm. and a bunch of like rambo and whatever um she's really saw. young in this she's very young yeah yeah she had to be in her teens or yeah. something yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah it's her first movie mm-hmm. right um bit part anyway uh so there's um so she may be cheating on on Roderick, but obviously this is a not a good relationship. He's Rod. All he right. freaks out at one point, which I thought was a great ad lib. It feels like an ad lib. Harvey Keitel. Which one? About the like it's a, it's a cat. Meow meow. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> over the top. Dario's probably like this more more is yes. good. Yeah, uh, go up. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so he kills a cat, but then he goes to a bar later where he... There's a very is, thirsty bartender. <laughs> very. Oh my God. Which is Sally Kellerman for some reason just kind of shows up. Is it Kellerman or Kirkland? Kirkland? Kirkland. I okay, think I looked Kirkland. up and it was Kirkland. I the wrong I could, person. Yeah. I, I mean, I could be wrong. I, I looked her up and... Yeah. But she yeah, has a cat. Yeah. But it might be the same cat because it has the same white spot. Why okay. is this white spot significant? And how do we find out it's significant? There's a message in it. If you look closely at it, it looks like a hangman's noose, like in the black, the black and the white together. This foretells your destiny. She's like a fortune teller. Like she seems like yeah, the gypsy. But he finds this information out before it's spelled out to him in, uh, by the bartender in a spectacular fashion. In the weirdest fucking twist, I did not see this coming. I, but, com- I mean, I was technically, completely lost. Yeah, technically, <laughs> I guess it was a, a dream, but it was like a. It was a dream, but almost like he was... Like a past life? Yeah, yeah. Or like, like jumping into another dimension like or something. Like he time-traveled? Yeah. It was yeah. fucking yeah. crazy. What? I think, that I think sounds crazy. He what are you talking about? He messed with the power about? of cats, I think, yeah, is what that's right. And this is that's what right. happens. He pissed that cat off, and then yeah. he gets it. I'll get well, you. Well, tell me about it. What happens when you, you, you mess with the power Well, he, of like, passes out drunk, and when he wakes up, he's now in, like, the 1600s. There's a Renaissance Fair in his yard. Basically, yes. With big bonfires and people doing... It's Yeah, it's a darker version There's some weird fucking, like, Pagan midsummer, midsummer, yeah, yeah. yeah like pagan fucking yes. witchcraft There's thing going on. going on. But everybody's dancing around, having a good time. It's like yeah. it's a party, though. Oh yeah, like, so yeah. you're not being put on a spike. You're yeah. having a good time. That's what I said. It's like a, it's like a pagan <laughs> something or other. But they do. They string him up. He is pointed out because they bring yeah. in the the uh, uh, dwarf because brings, his, in, because, brings in the cat. Yeah. For, on a noose singing yeah, a song. There's this <laughs> fucking like little person. Which I loved all of this. This is great, but it's so fucking weird. This fucking little person with his girlfriend, who I guess is now a witch in the 1600s yeah who <laughs> killed my cat yes rod you know and they pull rod out they string him up he been screaming the entire time fucking and they drop him. his ass yeah. on a fucking wood spike <laughs> drop <laughs> his naked ass on a wood bad, spike bad, yeah. bad shit crazy i did this threw me off not expecting yeah. it threw me good. off I yeah it. It was, and uh, it comes up through his mouth like cannibal holocaust yes. so yeah. Like, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah just all of a sudden out of nowhere yeah, yeah. Bloop. Was crazy Italian. They should have I mean, cut, they cut about two seconds earlier, though, because I saw his body go past the spike. And then the yeah, I know. Yeah, need a better too. editor. Yeah, um, still good. It's still good. Then we. Sean's also, like, I can fix this. I, I can fix it. That's what. Every time I see these, I'm like, I can fix you. No, well, this is a problem. I might have. <laughs> I my partner cannot stand. You know those um, Jimmy John's commercials with Brad Garrett. They yeah. come on. Okay, oh, yeah. so every time they come on, he's like, don't say it. Because I'm like, I can fix this commercial. <laughs> because I know a few editing tweaks that would make it work. You know, they're like 90% there. And you're like, I can like, get you over the finish line. Close. <laughs> it's cut there it's like, I can't stand watching it because I'm just like, I could fix it. <laughs> like, it's yeah. like, Jimmy John's, you have... Jimmy John's money. <laughs> you could fix you this. Could do this. Yes. These guys were so close. Yeah, yeah. a couple extra frames. Yeah. Just, uh, or shorn a couple frames. Yes, um, but he wakes up again. Yeah, yeah. but then he um, he actually does murder his wife. 
because uh well no he he, he finds the second cat right yeah he, finds oh, yeah, he goes cat. first he gets drunk again and he's like why does he sell me the cat to, to the, the bartender to the bartender because yeah. he goes back there it's like i want to buy your cat yeah she's like i'm giving it to you because it's your destiny <laughs> Right? I love this person. <laughs> <laughs> and then he brings the cat home and drunkenly, in a completely, again, we're saying believable performance. <laughs> it's not performative. I think Harvey Keitel has strangled a cat before. Yeah, I'm the just going to say The first time I saw this movie, I'm like, well, he's not doing anything. But now watching it, it's like, this seems like a drunk guy trying to strangle a cat. Yeah, yeah. Like, it does. I'm going to strangle the fucking cat. And he puts a telephone cord around its neck and. Away he goes. She comes in, clocks him over the head with a baseball bat or something. Yeah. Yeah. And he grabs a clipper. Which is a great hit. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Harvey Keitel is great in it's this. It's like, a like everything he's doing. Mm-hmm. But he gets yeah. hit and just falls straight backwards, and it's the greatest <laughs> yeah. reaction. It's a it's, cartoon it's hit. It's solid. It's good. I even like the, uh, the way that Argento stages this murder scene mm. is like... Because you don't usually see this in movies, but it's like he grabs the cleaver and he's aiming for the cat and he hits the windowsill. There's a close up of that. And then he hits the windowsill again. And you can tell like there's this like anger, frustrated anger growing in him. And then he just like turns to her and he's got the the cleaver already. So like, what do you do? He hit her with the cleaver, too. Mm -hmm. And so he like kind of doesn't start out like he's going to kill her, Mm -hmm. but then kills her. Then he's in it because, you know, the heat of the moment, the way he hits on the hand. It's like it's like your ring finger, like right below Uh, on the palm and like a cross. And it's like, I don't know, it's just like it's not it's not that where you expect it to get hit and it's like sometimes when you think about those unexpected places that injuries can happen it mm. makes it extra it's cringy painful. and gross yeah, yeah yeah this is a tom savini moment and this is yeah. why he does that bubbling blood that just kind of slowly pulses out from yeah, it because yeah because we see the blade like in the meat of yes. her hand like yes. sliding, sliding through out the meat. and it's yeah. like you know uh, we had this copyright in- 2121 saturday freak show <laughs> sliding through the meat sliding <laughs> through the meat there you go and we had something <laughs> for similar. whatever it sounds like a porn documentary uh, you know, like, after, <laughs> after i said it after i said it out loud i heard it yeah. and you're right i was like, like what are you copywriting <laughs> <now?"> <laughs> it's just like no this is the uh, sequel to slit there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sliding through the, the award-winning uh, <laughs> uh, short film. Uh, so yeah, plug it, Colin. <laughs> um, there was a similar. I had a similar reaction to the scene in Dress to Kill, right? Mm. Where uh, it's always it's those defensive things in the yeah. elevator. Yeah, where yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to keep you from stabbing me, and then you stab my hand, yeah, and yeah. it injures me. And not like a knife right through the thing. It's got to be like you're cutting. Past the, yeah. you know, yeah. like, it's just like yeah. it just makes you want to. Yeah. It's just like the. Grab your hand. Is it the first Jackass movie where they do paper cuts on the webs of Ooh. their fingers? Yeah, that kind and of. And that's thing. why I'm like, oh, I can't watch. I can't watch that. <laughs> like, I can't. It's too horrible. Like, it's. Ooh, I can feel it. Yeah. yeah. This is why we're Ugh. saying that this visual effect was better than any uh, murder in Halloween Kills <laughs> yes. last week. More yeah. believable. And like, <laughs> better there's something off. about how Savini like does the blood. It's like there's a little bit of a delay to it, which is realistic. Like it doesn't immediately yeah. come shooting out, and just kind of like like a lot comes out. But the way it pours and kind of pulls out looks really natural. Yeah. And that's uh, Savini only is the one, is the only one who I've seen pull that off like that. You yeah. know, okay, he was a photo- war photographer, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he saw real shit, and then mm-hmm. uh, and then many, you know, based all of his makeup effects on that kind of thing. Um, so I mean, this, uh, so she gets murdered, and this is kind of a, it's a quieter murder. Like it doesn't, like he gets her the sound effects anyway when he hits her with it. It's not loud and kind of a bombastic, but it's a quieter one, which makes it all the more creepier, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Then what does he do? Uh, then he, oh, what does he do? Well, he has to hide the body, of course, right? But he goes to great crazy lengths to do this, including because he has to convince his nosy neighbors. It's Martin Balsam and uh, Kim Hunter from Planet of the Apes. Oh, my God. Is, I forgot about this scene. How did I forget about yeah, that? I know. How did I like, forget about the, the whole series of things that Harvey Keitel gets into? <laughs> Which I think I get really into this because it's like equal parts cringy and suspenseful. You know, it's like yeah. suspenseful what he's doing, but it's also really fucking embarrassing what he's yeah, doing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> because he's got to figure out like how to... He's got to figure out his alibi and everything and where, you know, where he was and where his uh, where she was. So he's rigging up. It, he home alone uh, people in his, uh, a thing in his car where he. Puts oh, he weekends at Bernie's somebody. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
And he's he's got levers pulling up arms, waving at people. Yeah, and the so printed he, picture of her face and a oh scarf boy. around it. That's funny. I thought this God, was great. That was funny. Just like, well, you're committing to committing. this. Is <laughs> and I believe this is so goddamn everything Harvey Keitel is doing. Because yeah. he is a serious man yeah. trying yeah. not to get caught for murder. But man, he's still getting these phone calls from her boyfriend and from the other know. boyfriend, the 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 uh, you know student is, is like, "You're a liar, man." The student's I very know nosy. Oh just, yeah, he broke into his house to get his violin. I'm sure that wasn't because he knows like that. that this mm-hmm. guy killed her, right? Yeah. Like right. she knew that he killed her cat. He knows that she killed. He killed her. Mm-hmm. What did he do with her after he killed her? He like tied her up. Um, oh yeah, and then walled in. He walls the, like, her in the closet. She's in or something. It's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like a, yeah. Builds yeah. a fake wall. Well, because yeah. he, he ties her up to like a coat rack, right? Like a mm-hmm. wall peg yeah. coat rack. Yeah. yeah, and then walls her in. And then yeah. we get a scene. And puts VHS tapes yeah, over Yeah, VHS tapes. Oh, that's yeah. what you do. You, yeah. know, you, want, you don't want oh, yeah. you put your copies of The Searchers over it so nobody <laughs> yeah, will think like, anything yeah. of it, right? What's more What's more inconspicuous than John Wayne? Like, yeah. At one point, I do remember a black cat like clawing its way out of the wall. Yes. Like he buried the cat in the wall with her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Even though he, he killed that cat. Mm-hmm. But the cat somehow still alive. Nine yeah. lives, The right? cat always comes back, right? That's the whole... The yeah, the theme thing. of the story, right, is that like the cat's always going to tattle on him and always going to show up, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then, right, he fixes that, and then uh, the police show up. Tell, yeah, the police eventually show up. There's a scene, I got to point it out, only because I was like, I appreciate what you're doing there. Martin Balsam, at the end, you know, he comes to, uh, like, what's going on in the house? Why is there blood on the floor? And he comes <laughs> to the end of the stairway, and he's looking up, and I'm just sitting there going, like, Dario Argento knows that he's got the fucking private detective from Psycho at the bottom yeah. of the stairs. Yeah. You know, and he's like, <laughs> but he doesn't actually come up the stairs in this one, because if he did, he'd get killed at the top of the stairs. He's um, like, if I don't do this, I'm not doing my job. Yeah. Uh, the music is also very psycho y. Yeah. And it has a little bit, the the music in the second one has like a, it, it that's why I'm like, is this is all Pino Dinaggio. The first right. movie does feel like Pino Dinaggio. The second one feels like you got a little bit of goblin or something going on something, there. Something, um, something extra. But uh, so he walls her up. The cops come over. John Amos mm. from Beastmaster, yes, is, and, and Die Hard Two yes. is the cop this time, not uh, uh, um, Tom Atkins, yes, and his partner. But they're all in fedoras, which is strange. Like mm. that's just what you do if you're if you're a cop. And they do have that whole thing where, like, we've been told, that, you know, he probably murdered your wife, and so we're going to search the house, and then we're going to leave the house. Well, he didn't find anything, so we're leaving. And he's, like, bragging out the door to them, like, what did you think you were going to find between the solidly constructed <laughs> walls of my house? An what? idiot. <laughs> An idiot. What a thing to say. And then there's a Columbo moment. Anybody remember this? Oh, yeah. Columbo just, moment. Uh, one more thing. Yep. <laughs> so there's a knock on the door, and... The cops come back in and get their way back in the house. And it's like, he's going to be undone because he can't <laughs> sign an autograph on this uh, so card book. House. Yeah. And sure enough, they hear the wails of a phantom cat. And the partner goes up. And sure enough, yeah, Bob, you got to get up here or whatever. And they start peeling across, uh, away the wall. Mm-hmm. What do we find inside the wall? Lots of corpses. <laughs> a decomposed, his decomposed wife and... Yeah. And living, demon cats, yeah, but like the demon cats her? nested inside of her is what yeah. it looked like. It's like they broke out of her. They never grew fur, and they're just yeah. feeding off her because they got stuck they're in the, there. They're it's the kitten weird, version man. of the sleepwalkers cat people. Yeah, they're skinless, or, yeah. They're skinless, furless cats. I mean, they may yeah. as well, but skinless, yeah. skinless, just furless Ugh. something. Well, he does have like a voiceover, which I'm like, that's a last minute addition to try and explain what the hell. Like, oh, she must have laid her or laid, laid her eggs. Had her babies in there before the cat broke out. Right, yeah. she had li- uh, uh, given birth, and the cats living in the, in the, in the dark in the dank darkness. Yeah, so that's why like uh, albino cats. Yeah, ate the corpse. Yeah, and are like in yeah. her she looks, guts and all that. Really like, oh. <laughs> she looks eaten up. It was really gross. So they yeah. all discover that, and then there's well. They get attacked with a pickaxe. I know. I didn't see that coming. That like, okay, he's gonna go to. That's it. He's just you know, going. Yeah. He it's makes like every bad decision <laughs> you could make. It's it. It really is every bad situation mm-hmm. when you've accidentally murdered someone yeah. or purpose, purposely murdered <laughs> someone. Now he has no choice but to like what torch the whole thing and right, run. Burn it down like and run. that's it. That's the only option he has. Mm-hmm. He just killed two cops. Like 
Yeah. You're and not getting so, out of that. Then he has, there's the knock at the door. We know that that's that old couple, you know, complaining yep. about Nosey the noise next fuck. door. Yeah. And probably the boyfriend, uh, yeah. you know, right, yeah. they're the all student. out there. Yep. And so he devises a great escape plan. <laughs> he's going to, he's handcuffed to the cop. Who, right. The cop handcuffed him before they started tearing down the wall. So the cop is now dead. The key has fallen into the first floor, which is like three floors down. Mm -hmm. And he has to try and escape. So he decides to <laughs> go out the window, go out the grab a rope, go out the window. As soon as he grabbed that rope, I'm like, that looks like a um, noose rope. So and obviously he's going to get hung. It's like 2 p.m. Like right. broad daylight. Everyone right. can see what you're doing right now. <laughs> right. He's like, going out on what looks like probably a busy street, but yeah. he's off. But we also don't know. I don't know what he's trying to. I don't know what, what is he was his plan to do, to do I know, here. He because throws the rope. I don't think over he has a plan branch. this entire time. He he's wraps the rope around that. him. He's got the cop's body. I'm like, how? Are, what are you? Why did he? How? He's tying it up and he throws it around his neck. I think to keep tying it, just so he he doesn't have yeah, to hold maybe. onto it. And I think that's why. But then why. the cop slips. He grabs the guy. The belt snaps, and then the 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 weight of the cop handcuffed to him like snaps his neck i assume except without a snapping it's yeah. uh they i'm gonna say they messed up on this yeah, ending this ending like it. it feels it's not the they sound effects enough. something yeah. like they messed something that up reverse here. shot is her is painful like that right, reverse shot is not the swing of the body yeah. swinging and then that was all they had apparently yeah. so then they just reversed it so he, it looks like he swings back yeah. and then it, like then you're done then it's yeah. done. done get the yeah. fuck yeah. out and it's done <laughs> it's a quiet ending it's like there's no noise to them going yeah. out the window hitting the snag and then hanging from the as street. far as like the music the music isn't is not there's enunciating. No, there's, there's, no no punch. there's no punch. No, it's yeah. not. It's yeah. not going with what's happening on screen. And then he yeah. just out. Which yeah. feels like somewhere somebody ran out of money, time, or something. something. It was like yeah, we just got to do this. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in that regard, I'd... although Argento's is, well, I was going to say better directed, flashier directed. It's a better. I don't know. It's a better ender, but it's got a terrible ending. It's a terrible yeah, ending. Yeah. But man, he's moving that camera around. He's doing all sorts he's of things. Doing, when that like he's doing like he's putting angles inside drains or you know people are framing yeah. stuff up. We had cat uh, cam. When you mm -hmm. yeah cat cam when you when he drops the uh, keys we follow the yeah, keys. Yeah. Oh yeah, down. that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. This is, there is a lot of speeding up a film and you can kind of see it, but he does some cool things with it, like the keys falling down and everything. Yeah. And the one shot I like and must rip off at some point where you you're inside a building and you pan up. And you go just, through like the ceiling somehow. Yeah, like what they outside. do? They just had a piece of cardboard. Uh, it kind of looked like, like a flap. It flap and yeah. you're outside. Um, yeah. So you get. I mean, it's Dario Argento. So you do get Dario Argento cal camera calisthenics. Yes. In the movie. So um, yeah. All right. Well, we probably prattled on way too long about this, and you want to hear what we thought of the movies? Plural. Yes. Okay. The two movies. The two movies. The two. The two evil, evil eyes. eyes, as it were. Mm. All right. Uh, but but is, first, it, is it called that because each of them are, have an evil eye for this sort of thing? Like, that's what I take it as. Like one eye from Romero, one eye from Argento. I think two so. Evil eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who came up with the title? I don't know. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, so we're going to tell you. But first, we're going to go around the table. And we're going to answer some of your. That's not true. We're going to answer some right, of your right. mail. Before we go around the table. Yes, yes. So in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I think he wants us to move into a house like that. I think he'd appreciate it. I want to move into he, a house like that. Does he just want to like haunt more rooms? Well, the, a house like Those that definitely like, has a dumbwaiter, right? So he could uh, ride that up and down. But the yeah. second house? Either one. Oh. Either one. They yeah. were both like four stories. So I was so. going to say, he yeah. would like the first one because it had a double base. I think he would <laughs> that, that is very true. That's like his, oh, he's yeah. like, yes, double he base. He can live in the yeah. sub basement. Yeah. basement. <laughs> No, he, he loves high the, parties in the sub. He basement. loves a deep freeze. We don't even know if that basement has another basement. And there was a lot they of could. dripping going on. Never that was never really basements. explained, yeah. but it's That's, just you go down in the basement. It's, you said, yeah. "Oh, you dank." Igor's eyes lit up when you said dripping. <laughs> yeah. He loves that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, um, I suppose we should let you know how you can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. 
Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, also wants us to know that we have finally here and now inducted the great George A. Romero hey. on the Saturday time. Night finally. Freak Show Wall of Fame. Finally. What were the other movies that we did? Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. True. Creep Show. True. And this one. Oh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, about tonight's movie, Two Evil Eyes, Nelson Nascimento writes in, says, Romero and Argento Dupont. I haven't seen this one since its release in the theaters. The effects were great, but I seem to remember being let down a bit. It uh, seems like it's getting a resurgence recently, and it's time for a revisit. That's because of the 4K um, Blu-ray that mm. um, Blue Underground's putting out. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I've never heard of this one, but I'm looking it up. It appears to be an anthology movie, which I may have to check out. I do loves me a good horror anthology movie. Mm. Yes. I love them more and more the older I get. The more I'm like, why do yeah. we not have more of these? And then I try and watch the Creepo TV show, and I'm like, but this is not yeah. what I want. Mm. Yeah. I try. I keep going back. I know. Every so time they're like, it's a new season. I'm like, well, maybe this will be the one. And then it's I not. Know, they're terrible. Um, <laughs> which is ironic, because I think the year that this came out, Romero also wrote a segment of uh, Tales from the Dark Side. The movie it was also 1990. Mm. Uh, Travis Legler says, huh. Go figure, has Adrian Barbeau in it and is on the freak show. <laughs> what are the odds? Who you am got I your kidding? Number, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> he says, Who am I kidding? I actually like her acting style. Honestly, I'm looking forward to hearing this, but secretly, I'm kind of hoping for a huge laugh fest listening to Sean rant about the new Halloween first. That's truly a guilty pleasure of mine. There was. I think we delivered that. like listen yeah. to last week's yeah, episode. I know. By now, he's yeah. here. He's yeah. heard yeah. it. Yeah. We got a little ranty. Yeah. Uh, Giovanni Regis's life says uh, two evil eyes was the beginning of the end for Argento. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. What came after this? Pelts. Okay. Well, after <laughs> it was trauma, it was directly after. Yeah. And then I think his later stuff is not Phantom good of the Opera. I mean, said. right. Oh, well, Stenhall syndrome is like on the bubble. But the probably the last one that most fans would say was the good one was opera, and that was 87. Mm -hmm. That was one right before this. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Halloween Kills, mm -hmm. and Gecko Afterlife in HD says, uh, okay. I hated it, but I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I think you will enjoy it. I think you'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt Lawson says, I saw it today, and I loved it. It is a own. divisive own, yeah. movie. Yeah, it is. It own. might be the most divisive Halloween movie in quite a while, honestly. Aren't they all divisive when they come out? I don't feel like 2018 was nearly not like this. Not like this. Like this. No. Not no. like this. No. No. I know. I was talking to people today, and they're like, "That movie sucked." Oh, oh, yeah. like, Why? And they told me. Uh, <laughs> Artie sixty four one zero nine says, "Rank your three top Halloween movies, and would Paul Rudd have worked as Tommy in Halloween Kills?" Holly. What? Me? It's specifically directed no. at Holly. Oh, no. <laughs> Answer all these questions, Holly. Uh, no, not as Halloween Kill stands. I don't no, no. I Definitely honestly, not. like, I. He's too he, young looking, he, considering he's 50, but whatever. Well, and he has fuck great. you money. He doesn't need to be he doing doesn't stuff need to do like it. this. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't come back. Like, he's I, an Avenger. He doesn't have to do this. Well, I, 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 I want to forget part six ever happened, so please don't remind me of Although that, he was you know? the best part of. Well,. I like him in parts. Of, I like him, that, but yeah. I don't. That I like character in, is fucked in that. He's movie. fucked in that. Yeah, but I like, I like that. About I like him in everything. So, yeah. all right, well, Holly, what's your top three ranking uh, Halloween we've movies? We've done this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> See our Pat, what, Halloween two episode. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Halloween two. The yeah. TV uh, yeah. Ginger snaps. Uh, Peter Gatt writes in and says, "Besides this, name your favorite Mimi Rogers movie." Sean. I'm going to need a list of things she's been in. Right? I don't, I'm, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I'm not up on Mimi Rogers. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, Alan, you got to prepare us for these. Yeah, you can't, no, I know. You this can't is just, why you just, you can't just no, because bring you these just get on. Dead air me going, oh, I don't know. Next question. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, uh, Peter, uh, The Rapture with David Duchovny, where, uh, yeah, that's probably Mimi Rogers' best work. There you go. Love but, the Cubs. Yeah, IMDb is oh. not helping me because it's a lot of TV. So and she did a lot of TV, but she also did. Uh, there's a Ridley. This is probably just because it's my wheelhouse. A uh, Ridley Scott movie called Someone to Watch Over Me with Tom mm, Berger. Yeah. That was back when she was Mrs. Tom Cruise. Uh, Grant Parrish says uh, Ginger Snaps. He says low key though. 
Can you... Can we have more life milestones punctuated by cakes? You got your yes. learner's primit. That's an apple crumb cake. You yes. beat Sur- Super Mario 2. That's an Italian cream cake. Completed a road trip, trip without making reference to a billboard eating pass. Enjoy this German chocolate cake. Yes. <laughs> a thousand times yes. I want sure. to make this happen. I think this is... Don't we do this already, kind of? I bake a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is happening currently. <laughs> Richard Kratzer says, Ginger Snaps is a fantastic movie. Awesome review. However, you guys and gals are correct about the final She-Wolf. Sometimes less is more. It should have kept. It should have been kept in the shadows if they didn't have the budget to go full Rick Baker. I appreciated that they went practical effects, but it missed the mark. And Trick or Treat has my favorite modern human to werewolf transformation scene. This is, really, is probably my favorite episode. scene in that good movie. Call. It is a really good mm-hmm. one. Uh, B. Shaw Foolery says, after watching this movie, I'm really surprised how serious it is. I remember it being a little more funny and less somber or emo. I'm sure Lydia Dietz made a secret cameo. As far as the creature, the lack of hair and inclusion of wear titties is just insulting. <laughs> wear titties. <laughs> well, it's insulting. I mean, there's female werewolves. They can have wear titties if they'd like. Wear titties. It is very angsty. Very and, angsty. Yeah. Artemis Grove writes in and says, I'm listening to your podcast now. I love how you have the same thoughts that I've had about this movie. Number one, the hair. Number two, the period. (laughs) Number three, Jennifer's body. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And yep. Jennifer's body injected like 200% more humor into that story than than Ginger Snaps had, you know. The irony is that now I'm seeing a lot, I think because we brought Jennifer's body back to the Absolutely. But now I'm seeing Jennifer's body everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And we brought it like two years ago. Yeah. So we were way ahead of it. I take... Full credit, goddammit. <laughs> you brought it back away. No, no one was talking right? about it. Yeah. So. True. Now You're we're welcome. bringing back Ginger Snaps. You're so. welcome, yeah. Diablo Cody. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go around the table. We're going to let you know what we thought of tonight's movie, and that was Two Evil Eyes, starting with... Sean. Hi, guys. Hey. hey. I'm going to go first tonight. Um, this was uh, this was a pretty fun movie. Um, like we discussed, I think it... Uh, um, I think it could have maybe used... I mean, they were probably a little longer than they should have been. We felt a little padding on the stories and all that stuff. Maybe there should have been a third story in there, what have you. Uh, I definitely think... Ah, damn it. It's hard to say. Um, I liked the movie. I liked it a lot. I was entertained. Harvey Keitel is fucking awesome in this movie. Um, I'll watch him... I don't want to watch him kill any more animals, but I'll watch him do whatever, like, in kind of this arena uh, again. Um, the I keep forgetting the first one. The first one was good, too. Romero's was good. Um... Yeah, it's just some funny moments. I keep going back to the first movie where it's like, yes, he would melt. Like when they're talking about the body in the freezer and shit, like... Take was- your pills, Jessica! Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. See, he, yeah, he was great at yelling shit. Like, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with these. Um, you know, obviously less cat killing, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to recommend Two Evil Eyes. I had a good time tonight. It was fun. Uh, I'd watch it. Holly. Um, I'm going to disagree with you, Sean. I, I, there's some good stuff in this. There's some real good stuff. Um, I think Tom Savini brings it home. He's got a lot of great, a lot of great effects in this, um, but not a lot of opportunity. There's not a ton of effects. Um, and both stories kind of drag a lot. I was pretty bored for most of this. I think like the last 10, 15 minutes of each one is pretty entertaining. Um, Harvey Keitel is a genius, spectacular, no arguments there. But I think overall it is just a little too boring for me to recommend it. There's enjoyable stuff, I will say that, but no, I, I would not revisit it. And I would say you could probably pass because it's not one of the better anthologies that we've watched. So not saying it's horrible. But I'm not going to recommend it. Michaela. Uh, I mean, I love a horror anthology. I feel like I, w- I wish we could make them now and make them good. You know, because um, I don't know, something about just like knowing there's going to be multiple short stories is really intriguing. And I do wish there was another one. And these are both a little shorter. I think they drag a little bit and that they're kind of stretching the content to mm-hmm. make it fit the time, which is unfortunate. But um, I find it interesting that in the front half of George Romero's career is very much about like this outside thing invading your home. And as we go on with his career, it's about like the horror starts at home 
instead like i was thinking about monkey shines i feel like had a lot of parallels to this where like it almost feels like a lifetime movie in the way he shoots it sometimes because it's so much drama between human characters before any horror stuff even happens Mm. which is so weird yeah thank you um (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i'm just i think like i saw a lot of parallels not just the nurse with monkey shines because like Monkey Shines is one of those movies that just kind of like the depression creeps up on you until it's overwhelming. And that's kind of how this movie started, too. Um, and yeah, I mean, Harvey Keitel is one of those people that like the hangers always like bubbling right under the surface. And you're just like, God, don't drop a glass around him. He might fucking lose it. You know, right? like, yeah, yeah, you know, he does. so he really does. Um, don't want to know him in real life, but love watching him in the movies. So, I mean. Yeah, it's a pretty unhinged performance, so... I think we decided he's the only one we wouldn't make fun of for wearing a beret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I would make fun yeah. of him for wearing a beret. Yeah. And he does yeah. a lot in this movie, but I wouldn't make fun of him. Um, so I enjoyed it, even though they do sag a little and they're a little over long. Um, I think it's a great concept. I kind of wish like we would have more big-name directors doing stuff like this now. Um, but maybe this is just a product of a bygone era, unfortunately, because like I said, creep show the TV show is not what I want it to be. So, but I would definitely recommend this. I think it's worth checking out. I'm really surprised. I had never heard of it before ever. Really? Yeah. Never heard of it. Yeah. If you think you haven't heard of it, listener, go find the poster for it. Yeah. I was, uh, it all, it came back to me. Yeah. You see that poster. All came flooding back. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it was very well promoted um, when it came out. To me, uh, my discovery of it was when it showed up on um, videotape. And even then, I was like, I knew the name Dario Argento, but I don't think I'd seen a lot of his stuff at that point. So it was George Romero was the, you know, oh, George Romero's got a new thing. Mm -hmm. And then you watch it. And uh, I mean, I guess there's a contrast between the first time that I saw it and now. I guess that's how I see this movie. The first time I watched it, I really was unimpressed at the time in 1990 watching it on tape. And, you know, I was like, okay, you know, we had better stuff. It felt like, you know, I mean, like I said, the Tales from the Dark Side movie feels uh, more entertaining than this, Mm -hmm. um, uh, especially at the time. It's now knowing, you know, and again, this is, uh, you know, I'm watching it from from a perspective now where I've seen a lot of the movies of both of these guys' careers. And, you know, seeing them working together and seeing the very different styles, you know what I mean? Because I think, Mikhail, what you're saying, uh, Romero's visual style is not really, like, he doesn't really have one. Mm. Yeah, know? so it's like a sin, no, like it's like a lifetime movie. It feels no very flair. workman. Yeah, yeah, he has no <laughs> flair. He is more concentrated on the uh, performance and the dialogue and the character interactions where... Uh, Argento's and the other Argento's the visual guy. He sees the visual first, and then the character dynamics are secondary. You know, so it, it, it's interesting from that perspective to watch like these two guys whose styles do not fit together. You know, both doing like okay, well they're doing Edgar Allan Poe stuff, and of course Romero ends up doing a Living Dead you know thing, which I'm kind of like, oh man, it would have been cool if you would have you know done something outside the right. box because. He has done great stuff. I recommend, you know, I think maybe the last time we talked about it, you, like, you should go watch his movie, Night Riders. Not a horror movie, um, but that one is a very good, you know, it's a good movie. Isn't that um, Nights on Dirt Bikes? Yeah, they're like, uh, they do like Renaissance fairs, but uh. they actually, it's Ed Harris and Tom Savini in a big role. And I mean, like, they treat it the code of the Knights of Chivalry and all that, like, as an actual thing in, okay. the, in the late 70s, or early 80s. Um, so Argento's movie is flashier. <clears throat> I guess that was the question that you know we we talked about earlier. Do you think that they were in the right order? Um, if they fix that ending, if they're in the right order. See, I like them being in this order because the flashier one keeps you going. Uh, yeah. You would really run out of gas yeah. if, if yeah. they yeah. were switched. Yes, I think so. Yeah. But I think you know the complaint that yes they are over long. It's like these are two. One hour movies. And yeah, I think that I, I was probably like a contractual thing. Like, okay, we're going to do like full, you know, this is a short feature or something like that at one hour. But I'm like, man, you guys could have probably made a 90 minute movie here and cut your thinking, movies back to 45 minutes. Hoping 45, 45. That's yeah, thing. because there, there are scenes in the midsection. Like, obviously, you have to have the setup, right? And then you have the climax where everything pays off. And it's always in that, that middle area where. It starts to feel like, okay, how many times are we going back to this freezer to interview the dead guy? <laughs> yeah. You know, or something like, how many times is he going to have to kill this cat? You know, 
Um, I don't know, but overall, I'm going to say that I enjoyed it. I think it is still, um, you know, a showcase for both of these direct. I mean, obviously, it's like a, a um, it's not their. I'm not going to say it's their best work, but it does showcase their interests, you know, or or their strong points. It's like, okay, well, ultimately, the whole rallying against consumerism is a George Romero thing. It's like, okay, he's still doing that. And Argento's, like, visual shock, you know, weirdness, like, okay, you get that. Plus, you get, uh, yeah, I think the first time I watched it, I was unimpressed with Harvey Keitel. <laughs> but, you know, later when you watch it, knowing Harvey Keitel his work now you go like oh man he really is like i mean he's nailing <laughs> yeah <laughs> a play in a drunk but we um, like i said we're, we're, i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt he's a professional uh he was <laughs> for acting uh his that, method yeah i mean but that was uh that was something else and i think uh because obviously he got kind of famous or typecast or you know became like a central uh, part of his later or mid career, I think, before uh, you know, Reservoir Dogs and Quentin Tarantino kind of gave him like a, a second thing was uh, Bad Lieutenant. Mm. And Bad Lieutenant, I want to say, was only a couple of years after this. And it's like, there's the the real drunk cocaine fueled, you know. And then Nicolas Cage, of course, did the sequel, which I still yep. haven't seen. Um, have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Pretty. Uh, did you pretty see the first wild. one too? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I guess I'm going to recommend it. It's like a decent Halloween movie. I guess that's why I kind of brought it. I'm like, well, uh, it's these two guys who are established. Uh, it's a spooky little, you know, short movies for Halloween and nobody seems to have heard of it. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, blue underground's keeping it alive because they're like, here's the Blu-ray. Here's the 4K. Here's the whatever comes after 4K. You know, I mean, it's one of their titles, so they're just going to milk oh, yeah. that thing until forever. Yeah, forever. So, um, but it's available where you know, Canopy and HD or whatever. Uh, if you can but, log in. It's available. Yeah, if you can. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend Two Evil Eyes. Is a fun, um, you know, anthology uh, horror, spooky horror movie um so yeah okay there you go uh so next week we're gonna oh and happy halloween by the way everybody happy halloween. yes again happy halloween. uh next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by sean <laughs> oh. sean what are we watching next week uh next week we'll we're gonna cross one off the list we'll be watching shocker shocker okay, all right, right. That's, been on, that's been returns. on my list for a while mm-hmm. it's been on mine too so there you go okay all right good move uh, <laughs> I'm glad you all approve. Good looking out, Sean. <laughs> it's no, it's not gonna be an, uh, an eight-legged freaks, but it should be all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's next week on I can the still Saturday. Sense the pain <laughs> from eight-legged freaks. It was, like, hard. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. Yeah. It was rough. Hope, no, well, no, we'll I see how it. Shocker goes. Wait, has everybody seen Shocker? No, I've never. We'll seen find it. out next week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.